Do you feel like you are stuck on the mid-level and you don't know which front-end concepts you should focus on to progress to senior level? During last 15 years, I helped lots of developers to close this gap and reviewed lots of front-end databases. This is why by the end of this video I will show you 10 different front-end concepts that can help you to become a senior developer. And the most important point of this video that it's not only about concepts, it's about thinking. So first of all is separation of concerns. And if you are a good developer, you probably don't write all your logic in a single file, like a single React component. We have this separation of concerns that we try to split our code in different files, like different services, helpers or components. And on the senior level, you should not follow it blindly. Does it really make sense to split your code here? Do you really need to create this helper? Most often, developers create helpers and they think that they are shareable and reusable, but in reality, nobody will use them in the whole project and people will simply create their own version of the same function. If you really want something reusable, you need to organize it correctly. In other case, it is not reusable. So it might be better to split your code in a single place, just to make it more readable, but not reusable. And if everything sounds overwhelming for you, I prepared a free PDF Senior Starter Kit, which is a checklist and the 30 days plan what you need to focus on to become a senior. The second one is state management trade-offs. You probably hear that Redux is amazing, and in a lot of companies people are using Redux or NGRX in Angular, not always because they need it, but because they hear that it is really awesome and they saw that other companies are using it. Is Redux a silver bullet for state management in the frontend? Obviously not, there are a lot of different solutions, and yes, Redux is great, because it forces you to write code in a specific way, and all developers typically know this way, and you can scale it really easy, but do you really need Redux in every single project? Obviously no, this is why you need to think about it beforehand. What does it bring to the table? If you have a really simple front-end application without a huge global state and you don't have any problems inside your project, then you don't really need Redux. All developers are writing code in a different ways, you really need some global shareable state management, then obviously Redux might be a way to go. Again, you need to evaluate technology without just blindly following other companies. The third one is about accessibility. It is not only about making websites for blind people, it is mostly about improving your website to be easier to navigate and use. You really need to think critically. Can users find information easy on your website? Is your error message that you are showing understandable, or it simply states server error and nobody knows what happened? Your website must be pleasant to use, and this is exactly what accessibility is about. You should not cover every single field with accessibility. On a basic level, you just need to make your website more accessible. The next one is about performance optimization. I typically see two huge problems. Either people are optimizing every single component from start to the end, and it makes their code extremely verbose, or they are not doing anything until it will break completely. Both variants are not great. Obviously, you need to think about performance beforehand and implement something simple to make it not slow. But you should not focus on performance too much, and it is completely normal to wait for the bottleneck. But still you need to follow some performance guidelines, like not load too much data and implement pagination instead, split your code or avoid unnecessary renders. The next one is API design and error handling. Here I see lots of problems. Typically all front-end developers are writing only happy path code. They assume that they will get this specific field from the API. If they don't get this field, their code is simply broken. You must write your code in a way like your API can deliver any field wrong. And if you think it is too much work to cover every single field on the client, there are a lot of different libraries where you can define schema of the data that you are getting. 
or use something like GraphQL where you are getting exactly the same schema out of the box. So when building frontend, you must make sure that you never get unhandled errors, you show loading states, error states, and most importantly, meaningful errors. But what about testing mindset? Obviously, all people are saying testing is great and we must do that. But almost all developers are not testing, even senior developers. Why is that? The main problem that I see in a lot of projects that they don't have a setup for testing. And if you don't have this setup, you can't just write a test, even if you want, when you have a bug. First of all, you need to make this setup. This is what stops most of developers. It is not that difficult to write tests if you have the setup there. And most normal developers will cover the bug with tests just to stop it from breaking again at that place. This is why it is extremely important to build this setup to test in your own project. And then other developers can at least cover bugs with tests. Another question is how many tests we need to write. Obviously, 100% code coverage is not great. You are using too much time for unnecessary things. You need to cover as small amount of code as possible, but only where it breaks. From my perspective, it is enough to just cover the basics that your project is working and then wait for bugs, and then you are covering every single bug with tests. Another variant is obviously if you prefer to write your features with tests, this is totally fine, you can go for it. But what about progressive web applications? A lot of people are saying they are not needed. Fine, you don't need progressive web application, but have you ever opened your website on a slow internet? Most often, developers are working from the offices with high-end internet, and nobody checks how their project will work with the bad connection. You can easily change it in DevTools and check how it feels. After that, you would probably want to optimize your website a lot because it will be barely usable. Another important point is clean architecture. You must understand how your code is structured in your project, what is the folder structure, how you can scale it, especially when your project is getting bigger. And you need to fully understand a design that was used in order to maintain this architecture. You can write a list of rules when you split stuff, where you move shareable stuff, what to do if your component is becoming too large or your module needs to be reusable. When you have a list of such rules, it is much easier for every single developer in the team to work with it. Another point is about TypeScript mastery. A lot of devs for some reason think that TypeScript is simply typing for JavaScript. But it is much more. It is similar about describing all your entities and your architecture and writing contracts how different things are communicating between each other. From my perspective, writing types is more important than writing code, because people will understand your code much better when you wrote great typings. And the last one is UI and microinteractions. Obviously, we must focus on UI and that it works correctly in the application. But a lot of people like to jam lots of animations in their project, which make it feeling slow and laggy. On the other hand, I prefer things like optimistic updates, which gives the feel that your data are available for you instantly. Additionally to that, things like skeletons are much better than a spinner, because it gives you a feel that your data are almost there. It might trick a user, but he will be much less irritated than seeing spinner. And obviously you should not forget about notifications. If user did something, show him a confirmation message. In this case, user always will feel safe and understand that all changes were applied. So if you are serious in becoming a senior developer and you want to get some help, get my free PDF with the checklist and 30 days plan, which is a great jumpstart and I wish that I knew it earlier. You can find the link in the description under the video.